I'm Robin Clevett, welcome back to my channel. I'm out on site, we have our floor joists, we have our walls, we have our roof. Now we're at the point where we need to lay down the flooring and this particular floor is a P5 floor, it's a chipboard floor, it's mostly what everyone uses across the UK, whether it's new build, refurbishments, loft conversions, extensions and that sort of thing. The product I'm actually laying is called Egg Protect and this version of P5 is moisture resistant. Not only is it moisture resistant, it's good for up to, I think it's up to 60 days outside as you're building so you can actually get your joists in on the first floor, second floor. You can get your Egg Protect down if you follow the instructions correctly and then you can carry on building. It will take the weather. So what we're going to do here, we have got the luxury of our roof is on, but what we're going to do, we'll still put it down exactly the same way as we would if we didn't have the luxury of a roof. And there's a couple of methods for fixing this. Egger call it method A and method B. We're going to choose method A. This is the method that's, um, if you're looking for an NHBC approved method or the lifetime guarantee, then this is the method that we use. And I'll take you through that as we go. The very first part of laying the floor for me is actually deciding where I'm going to start. I'm going to start in this case from the back of the building and work out what I don't like to do while I'm fitting it is walk back all over it, walk on the glue. I like to let it all go off. It doesn't take that long to go off. So basically, golden rules are 10 mil spacer all around the perimeter, but that can increase as well. There's another rule of thumb, depending on how many meters long the room is, you may have to increase that slightly, but so you need to check that. But generally speaking, in this room here, we're just about three and a half boards wide. 10 mil is absolutely fine. I use a plastic spacer all the way through and that's adequate. So we've chalked a line all the way through and that just tells me how far to take my glue. Once we've got the first row down and we're happy with it, it's nice and straight, then we can speed things up a bit, we can work a little bit quicker. But the first one, we're going to get the glue on in a very orderly fashion. Now we cut the top of the bottle, it's a 5mm bead. We put two lines of glue per joist, roughly 5mm in from the edge. We also go along our outrigger noggings all the way through there, so everything is bonded. And we're using roughly one bottle per six sheets. Now, we're at 600 centers, our joist here, which means that inevitably we'll use slightly less than if we were at 400 centers. So I'd imagine we're going to get a little more than six sheets per bottle, purely because the spacings of our joist is bigger, so we use less. So we're going to get on now and get this first row all the way through. We're going to glue it all, we're going to get it all together, then we're going to use a straight edge to straighten it up, then we'll put our mechanical fixings down the back to secure it, and then we're away. Gloves, really important. Thank you, mate. You don't want to get this stuff all over your hands. And I've also got some wipes here as well. It's just handy to keep everything clean, wiped. Even your gloves, you can use the wipes on just to you know, make sure it doesn't build up. We also pop a little bit of tape around the bottle because you'll see that the glue will want to build up and run back. Just gives you a bit of a chance before it runs down your bottle into your hand. So we find that works quite nicely as well. But the key is, or the name of the game is, just to try and manage it well. And if it's been really warm and this has been in the sun, it's going to be more like liquid like water coming out effectively. Yeah. So we're just going to come to the line. We're going to go across the outrigger at the back here. There, good, big, good there. A couple of beads on here up to our line. The reason we only want to go up to the line to start with is because what we don't want it to do is to get in the way of our tongue groove unnecessarily. Because when you push the next board up, if you haven't got it on there, you've gone for a cup of tea or something, the next thing you know, you can't get it together. That's it. So we'll ease the first board in. Little tip, whenever you're using any sheet material with a tongue and a groove, is always have a look down the tongue 
and the groove to make sure sometimes in transit they get a little damaged on the edge and if they get a little damaged on the edge and you try and push them up and you haven't seen that it's not going to happen so we'll just flick this up quickly and have a look in the well it doesn't matter here we'll just have a look at that tongue that's good right on we go we're just going to drop it into the back corner that's it nice and tight now we're going to 10 mil spacers now it will it will sit on the glue and it will roll around a little bit I think you don't want to move it around too much because you want the glue to bed down where it is. You don't want to knock it all off the side of the joist. Now what I like to do is have my tongues out facing, if you like, here. And the reason for that is when we glue in, we glue along the tongues we glue inside the groove and we push them up. It's much easier like that. There we go. That's all looking good. Right, I'll carry on for the next sheet. I make sure the joists are clean as well. Super important that they're clean. Doesn't matter if they're a little bit damp. If in the case of you're doing this without a roof on, PU glue from Egger will be fine. Some say that moisture is good when using PU glue, helps the curing process, so. And the groove. Lovely, in we go. And lift your end up, Ed, lift your end up. That's it, nice. Gently lower it down. We'll get that tapped up with a block. Pop a spacer in. All right, give it a tap up with this. Just going to tap it watch that joint for me as i tap it because it's in line it will want to close up and straighten up good okay let's go for the next one just go as far as halfway on this one all right Ed, then it Halfway on the next one, yeah. Next one. Just that one there. That's... Just do one line on that one. Yep. So you've got to cut the next one in after that. <laughs> yep, you'll end up a tiny bit more. That's it. Good. And that's it, mate. Give it a little tap with your block. So I like to use a straight edge such as this. It's the same length, in fact it's a bit longer than a board. Instead of getting another board up to try and straighten them up for the first row, get a straight edge into your joints here. Make your adjustment on the packer. In this case, I've just got to come out a fraction. That is also evident by looking at the join here. Before the glue oozes out and goes off. If, if I've over pulled it there, I can then just tap it back with the straight edge. And once I'm happy, that we've got a really nice a joint there. I can pop a screw in at the back. Fairly standard carpentry, but your screws want to be two and a half times the thickness of your flooring. This is an actual flooring screw. And we're going to go all the way along the back. They go nice and flush, no pre-drilling needed. And you've got to make sure you're no closer than eight millimeters to the edge. And we want a fixing on every single joist. What I'm gonna do is just fix the ends for now and get it all dead true and straight. And then we'll go all the way through it.
There's a little bit of work going on here on site and you might be able to hear that in the background, but that's the building trade. So you can see that we've put through the first three full sheets. We've also managed the glue that we can step back now, take a measurement for the M1, cut that one, get the offcut prepared to start our next row, and then we're away. So by managing the glue, marking the line, working to the line, there's no glue going to go off where I've got to start scraping it out in the time it takes me to measure, mark, cut, and get that small one in. I'm really happy with the fact that it's nice and straight, using the straight edge. And also, I found from using sheet material, whether it's OSB, P5, sometimes you'll jam the boards together thinking they're nice and straight. You'll start working through the floor and you start seeing some differences and some discrepancies. What I'm saying to you guys is pull a line every now and then and check yourself back to the datum. The good thing about this adhesive, if you're using it on the tongue and in the groove, it will help you no end keeping everything nice and straight. So in the fitting guide for Ega Protect, this is the method A I'm using, is method A and method B. In fact, method B uses slightly less mechanical fixings than method A, but method A is the one which is ideal for NHBC work. And equally, um, I think I quite like method A as a, from a personal perspective. Method A simply means that on the first row, on the ends of the boards, you've got three fixings effectively at 300 mil centers. So 300, 300. And on the rear of the first row, we're gonna be fixing into every single joist. So wherever there's a joist, we're gonna be putting a fixing all the way through. And then, so I'm gonna get on and do that, but then on subsequent rows, we'll be here, here, center, effectively where they join in this case, and in the corners. So we landed, all of our boards are landed on a joist. Now there will be times, quite a lot of times, where it won't land on a joist. And there are certain rules that, for example, the NHBC want to see. So if you have a board joint and it falls between two joists, what the NHBC want is a full support for that. Now what that could mean is a nogging 
running at the beginning and the end of the board and one coming through where the join. So a similar to the letter H. And they want those on all the joins. Now what I had the luxury of doing here is because I designed this building, I was able to make the floor work exactly for full sheets from end to end. And also the building, the width of the building allows me to make my cut here, once I'm away from this window opening, I can make the cut of this end and it will immediately start me down at the other end. So we were able to tailor this building exactly to suit regular panel lengths, in this case P5, which is 2.4 by 0.6. So I'm going to get on, screw all these through, and once they're all screwed through, we can just literally sail right the way through this floor then. It's a very quick job. Once we've set ourselves out, we've got two great rows through here, really nice and straight. You can see the adhesive, how it just oozes up everywhere. This is effectively what's happening underneath the board, between the board and the joist. And the whole idea of this bonded system is to eliminate squeaks, um, you know, problems. And if years ago, when we used to put chipboard down, it was just a nail, a ring shank nail, or maybe a screw. The screws certainly weren't like they are now. The technology in a screw now, this is a flooring screw, a particular flooring screw, and it's got, um, a smooth shank in the middle if you like so when you're biting through it allows the board to be pulled down tight if you're going to be doing that so that's it now i'm going to go through and get all of mine fixed on the joist everywhere all the way through you remember you've got to be eight millimeters minimum away from the edge you don't want to split anything out And then every row now, I'm going to be doing the end, the middles, and the middles. So we'll come through this one first. So we've got the first half of my floor down and this is a really nice place to be because everything on this side's gone off. We went and had a cup of tea and a bit of lunch and it's absolutely solid now. So we can then, if we want to, as we're working our way across now, because we've got half of our floor ready to go down, stacked over there, we can now move it back onto here if we wanted to. But because we've got the luxury of all this space outside, we're going to still carry on working to the door. So the fixing, I'm just going to run through the fixings again. The first row, every joist all the way through the back. Then the front of the every board, we're going virtually at 1200, which is the center of the board, the join, the center of the board, the join and so on. The next row is exactly the same, ends, centers of boards, joints, and that's basically how we progress all the way across the floor. So now we've just got a simple job of actually getting the rest of it down and finishing for the day. I think this is the best way for me to do, I always find if, if you just ping this line across, you really can manage the glue well, you know? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, this is all right. Years ago, we used to put these floors down, they just had a fixing, they didn't have any glue. Glue on the tongues, just normal PVA. Yeah, yeah you see, have all kinds of problems with them. In fact, one of the biggest complaints of new builds is squeaky floors. I mean, this is why we've had to adapt, and the NHBC has become super fussy, obviously, yeah. because they keep going back to repair floors. So by using this glue, I mean that you can feel how solid it is. Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? It's just beautiful. It takes up all that irregularity that you get with timbers. I know that we put our timbers in super flat. But, you know, still, still, it's a yeah, exactly. Too, so. so it's handy having some wipes on site, you know, if you do get it on your finger. Yeah. E even on your glove, it's just really nice to be able to just clean it off.
Yep. Good, I'll cut the next bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a tad. That's good. That's good. Let's go again. Give it a good wallop up to me. Yeah. 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 I'll get the next one. Down your end.
Now we're going to flip it right over like that. You're going to go inside. If you can reach. All right, mate. Great, perfect. Go on then, perfect. That's it. Give it a little one in the middle here. Find that glue edge. Just there. That's it. Get the screw in there. All right, get the next one cut, and that is it. So that's it, we've laid the floor. I really enjoy laying these floors, especially these new modern fixing methods where you're relying on that amazing adhesive to do all of the work of where we would have hundreds of nails before and screws. And it's a really nice system, it's, um, it's quick, You've got to get used to the glue. Obviously, you need to wear gloves and you don't want to touch it. We tried to work here from the back out just so we've not walked on it. This has all gone off now. It's fine for me to walk on. We, we leave the adhesive right till towards the end and we scrape it all off. And it's perfect. The last job I have to do is where I've got an edge that is exposed. Let's take a, a stairwell, for example. If you were building a floor on site, you had a stairwell, you've got no roof on where you've got those exposed edges and indeed round the edges if you can get to them if the brick walls aren't already up. If they are, you've just got to paint them as you put the boards in. So cut the bottom of one of the pots off. There's always a little bit left in the bottom. And if I just grab this one, then just a small brush, just a cheap throwaway brush because you're never going to use it again. And then literally take the edge and just touch it all the way across here just to protect that, in my case, before the windows get fixed. And that's it, that seals it all up. Makes a really good job of it. Well, I'll get on and do that. Pack my tools up and go home. Thanks so much for joining my channel. Please check back soon. Got plenty of interesting stuff coming up in the future.